AB Calculus section 4.1, page 1. We are talking about extreme values of a function. And we're going to start off reviewing some of your pre-calculus and handle these ideas intuitively initially. If we want to talk about um, relative or local extrema, the relative or local part means in the nearby area. And the absolute or global means overall. Extrema then refers to maxima and minima. So when we want to talk about a relative maximum, that's kind of like the top of a hill. And when we want to talk about a relative minimum, that's the bottom of a valley. Absolute extrema, so an absolute maximum, is the overall largest y value. And an absolute minimum is the overall smallest y value. Looking at some examples, and again, very intuitively here, we look at the y values, but we, are, we identify the locations of those maxima and minima in terms of their x values. So looking at this picture, we would see a relative maximum at x equals a. At B, we'll see a relative minimum. It's a low spot. And we'll see another relative maximum at X equals C. In terms of the absolutes, the overall largest y value occurs right here at x equals c. And there is no absolute minimum because this function keeps going down here and down this way. There is no absolute minimum. Taking a look at this graph, if we look for our relatives first, we'll see a relative minimum here at E. There is also a relative minimum out here at G. In the, even though we can't see the other side, that's okay. For the part that we can see, that's a relative minimum. It's the lowest point in the nearby area. We'll see a relative maximum at F. And looking for our absolutes. The overall largest y value occurs right here at f, so we do have an absolute maximum. At x equals f, and we will have an absolute minimum value at x equals g.
that is the overall lowest y value. Notice that this part up here, while it's increase, well, increasing as we go to the left, the function is decreasing, but heading up this way, this is um, flattening out here. We're seeing a horizontal asymptote along the x-axis. So this will not continue to go upward past the x-axis. Looking at this one down here, when we start identifying our relative extreme values, we only see a relative minimum at x equals c. There is no relative minimum here at x equals a because we never get to this particular y value that's here at a. There's a hole here. So there's always something that's a little bit closer to that particular y value here. There will always be another point in between. So this is the only relative minimum value over here at x equals c. There is a relative maximum. at x equals b. In the nearby area here around b, that black dot up there, that is the largest y value in the nearby area. That is also, I'm just going to let that phone go, I don't know if you can hear it or not. Um, there is also a absolute maximum at b. Okay, how about an absolute minimum? There isn't one because the y value here at C is larger than the y values over in this area and we can never actually get down to that y value right here. So there is no absolute minimum. All right, now what if we look at this graph over here, and instead of the point at x equals b, instead of it being up there, what if it was down here? And to help you see that, let me cover up that point up here. So we have to look at this point now. So it's the pink dot that's right there. All right, what changes? Um, oh, it's only at B, so we're not interested about anything that could be happening at C. About this point right here at B, it's no longer a maximum value. There is no absolute maximum. That spot at B is no longer a relative maximum. However, that spot at B now, that is a relative minimum because we look in this section, that is the lowest y value in that section. In that nearby area, that's the smallest y value. So there is now a relative min at x equals B. And absolute minimum doesn't change. However, if I had taken that point, and instead of putting it like up in here, what if I put that point at B way down here? Then we would have an absolute minimum value at x equals B. Again, at that point, instead of putting up here, if I put it way down here, then we would have an absolute minimum at B. Thanks for tuning in. Check out page two.